Let's read off the recommendations. As we, as I said, it's a fairly long list, and obviously, I'm not reading all the details. Uh, this report puts out some really nice details uh, in terms of what is needed, and obviously, based on lots of experience on doing these things. So, what are the recommendations in building an early warning system for all? Early warning for all, EW for all, right? Focus on a risk knowledge, preparedness, advancing multi-hazard early warning system, implementation across the regions of Africa, the Americas and the Caribbean, as well as the uh, least developed countries and small island developing states. Okay, so uh, there are some details here on the tools and standards and data and tracking systems of for hazards, losses, damages, and so on and so forth, but the pillars remain the same. Design multi-hazard early warning systems for scale. Without huge investment and technical support over a sustained period, it's extremely difficult for a country to progress from no muse to a fully resourced and operational system capable of dealing with complex multiple cascading and compounding hazards. So multi-hazard early warning systems really do need to have a very good idea of what are the local hazards, what are the hyper-local vulnerabilities, exposures and hence risks as well as what responses are possible, what preparedness has been done and what the gaps are that needs to be that need to be filled, right? Share data and knowledge. We already said this, right? But it cannot be said enough because data sharing remains a massive handicap even between two states sometimes because water resource may be very valuable that one state in the same country may not be uh, wanting to tell the neighboring state with whom they have to share wa uh, water that they may have enough water. They will always highlight how little water they have, but when they have water, will they happily share? Of course not. So throughout this report, data sharing has been highlighted as an ongoing issue, yet it is the foundation for any multi-hazard early warning system, whether the data is about hazards, vulnerability, exposure, risk, or related information such as local traditions and languages that affect the dissemination and understanding of warnings okay develop communities of practice I wrote an article saying we need extension agents but that was before I read this report but data alone is never enough to establish effective muse globally yet people centered and adapted for local needs it is essential to establish and grow communities of practice where knowledge and guidance can be shared and lessons learned so this constant feedback experiential learning and assimilating those into disseminating and preparing for early, you know, disseminating co and communicating early warnings and being prepared to deal with the early warnings. Early action are all essential. Ensure local ownership and all, and all of society approach. So including stakeholders, users and so on to co-produce and let people have ownership of the system aligned with the need for muse to be people centered it's essential that local actors are not just involved or consulted but that they are at the heart of muse design development or co-development implementation evaluation and improvement and operations even though people know that early warnings are meant to uh, you know uh, save their lives unless they feel like they are part of the system they may not respond at detriment to themselves so this is not even trivial in terms of incentivizing people and firms and businesses to participate in the co-development of muse train key actors and test plans through simulations and exercises drills 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 walking evacuation routes adjustments to standard operating procedures introduction of additional backup equipment and changes 
or to governance structure and so on always critical leverage flagship programs and existing initiatives so nu numerous mechanisms uh, partnerships and programs have been showcased I have somebody at the door let me stop for a second about that uh, some electrical work going on and they're going to turn off my internet soon but it should be okay with the recording so we were t uh, reading about the recommendations for establishing early warning system for all early warnings for all so we are talking about leveraging flagship programs and existing initiatives so building on what exists in terms of you know uh, fora mechanisms and tools for coordination and alignment across all countries partners and funders and so on is always important existing platforms such as the anticipation hub obviously will kick start the whole process to build on maximize innovations in science and technology well how do we do that of course research funding is very important education to build a research program is important but not all countries have this India and China are doing great for example Brazil is doing well but there are many countries which are lagging so that needs attention or you need capacity building where richer countries transfer knowledge and intellectual properties to help the developing countries harness sustainable and complementary funding you know we have to know the, the the details in terms of governments donors philanthropists uh, in the uh, adaptation course i've also discussed on how uh, development banks and so on world bank asia development bank and so on and so forth provide funding that are supposed to be for economic development and adaptation is a separate part but sometimes there is no real separate funding so countries have to be very very careful about whether they are just focusing on economic development at the risk of maladaptation or increasing exposure and risk rather than increasing resilience so power and communications community leaders to be engaged and so on and so forth fully operationalize the monitoring and evaluation framework maybe that's the last slide so uh, the ambition and scale of the uh, EW for all initiative is expanding the momentum of momentum in MUSE the multi hazard early warning system why do I keep saying MUSE and multi hazard early warning systems because these are separate podcasts and somebody is only listening to this they shouldn't be lost saying what is this MUSE but anyway if you follow all the podcasts together great you can always go back to the report as well because people take one podcast and ask me what is this report why don't you cite it well because it's cited in the first podcast and then not in every podcast okay so the ambition and scale of the EW for all initiative is expanding the momentum in Muse implement uh, sorry in Muse implementation both in financial flows as well as rapid advancement of Muse across its uh, value cycle hence accountability is a key component to sustaining this momentum the operationalization of the EW for all monitoring and evaluation framework including the accompanying tools and products is critical to track progress inform decision making and measure success okay excellent report uh, as I said in the beginning I'm a big fan of uh, early warning systems and especially early warnings for all not just across the globe but even within India for all for example if there is a heat wave in a mega city like Mumbai not every neighborhood is affected the same way so everybody in a city also has have to get early warnings the preparedness the training to respond and so on some vulnerability studies one of them I, am in, I was involved in show that training or educating girls even fifth sixth seventh grade improves their ability to assimilate early warnings and respond to them and help the family kids save food save grains and so on and so forth okay these are very very critical so these uh, communities of operation which can uh, you know respond to early warnings and engage the community in responding are very critical so let's leave this report here then very nice report you 
definitely go back and read it if you are interested in more details or in applying this system in your region okay see you in the next topic which should be what should it be I'm just always curious to mention uh, field interventions for climate change mitigation let's see what that involves in one of the previous podcasts I said I'll talk about uh, evolutionary traits and climate action actually I want to do that but I have to read some uh, seven papers to summarize the ideas it will be multiple podcasts but still I have to read them carefully before I start recording them so I postponed that one okay so what I say will be the next podcast in this podcast may not necessarily follow this podcast because sometimes I do things a bit carelessly but these are useful I hope okay see you